Okay, wonderful. Now I'm going to start sharing my screen. Presentation that will guide the conversation. Um, let me see. Okay, so uh, welcome parents. This is our first official uh, parent meeting of the year. And, and it is, uh, the content is uh, based on what we feel is important or relevant information to empower you uh, in your role as the most present and uh, physical teacher for your child these days. Uh, on the screen, you see the agenda. Uh, we are, I, I will let you know who is here with us and who will be presenting with the team. Uh, we will also give you a little bit of an idea as to uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, we will cite briefly. We will talk about uh, the parent portal, few communications, and ClassLink. Uh, with us, we have uh, Mr. Shane Pinel, who is our Director of Information and Technology. Mr. Diaz, who is our Language Support Services Director both of them at district level. In fact, all of us are district level employees. So we also have Ms. Melanie Valdez, who is one of our IT managers. Um, Nereida Guerra, who is our administrative assistant at Language Support Services. Carmen Fernandez, Gracie Gutierrez, who are also specialists in the IT department. Uh, as you can tell, a lot of uh, Basically, all the information that we will share to related to IT uh, and uh, I, information and technology is a team that's uh, working uh, so hard uh, weekends, long days, make sure that our students and our teachers and you have the tools necessary to make sure that our students experience a positive environment and uh, interactions and experiences that lead to uh, learning at home, given this contingency. So uh, with that, uh, we'd like to then go to the next slide, which is updates. Uh, we know, uh, please be, uh, I don't know, I guess, be certain that we understand and we, and we appreciate your patience because the beginning of the year has been unprecedented for obvious reasons. We have had to make a lot of adjustments, not only uh, for students whose parents uh, decide to uh, switch their educational model, but also for other reasons. We want to assure you that we are working hard to make sure that every student is placed in the right program with the right teacher and also respect our teachers and have uh, in consideration what placement uh, we have uh, decided for them based on several factors. But uh, uh, we are striving to make sure that this experience this year becomes a smooth one. That is something that we wanted you uh, And I would like to, uh, the microphone for Ms. Melanie Valdez. Uh, she's going to give us a quick tour of our website because uh, these days it's a very important means to to make sure that we communicate with you. Thank you. Valdez. Good afternoon. Um, before I get started, just a little keeping house. Um, Mr. Pinnell, would you mind making um, Carmen Fernandez a, a panelist, please, if you could? Um, okay. So the website is um built to be consistent across the district uh so all of our school site homepages have a large picture in the front and it has a banner along the top and they all look very um, similar to what you're seeing on your screen right now um probably the most important things to point out as far as the website's concerned is the let's go tab on the top right hand side of that way for you um of your screen uh, if you click let's go, you'll see that students have the ability to click on class link. Um, this is a screenshot or else we would have shown you, but um, when they click on let's go, they can see uh, class link. It's like the third option down. 
and that will get them to their launch pad. Um, if a student is using a Chromebook, it's the first screen that they see. So you really don't need to go to the district website, but if you're using a personal device or if you're using, um, you know, any personal device, you uh, would probably want to go to the school website or the district website and you can get to class link through the let's go tab um, button. Um, another cool thing are all the little apps on the or like icons to the right of the large picture. Uh, those are all, um, let's see, quick links for students to use, um, including a link to student portal, a link to parent portal. Is that cue um, lunch menus, you know, and we're back in class um, and um, a bunch of little um, important links that are very useful to students. We try to mold it around what would be the most useful for them to have. So um, that's a really quick place to go if you're looking for something for your student. Um, also below where on the district website, it's called announcements. It's also um, a section, a column of applications on all of the school home pages called announcements where the district can promote district wide incentives. So, for example, our parent meeting is the first thing listed because we want to make sure to catch everybody's attention as far as, you know, um, previous recordings or um, questions that have been answered, those FAQs, um, you can definitely go there for um, things that are going on right now, including a parent portal sign up. I know um, we just launched it today. So um, it's just a place to go if you have been trying to set up your parent portal account and you don't know your PIN or your password, or you haven't been able to get in touch with someone at the school site, you can go to any of our school websites and in under announcements, uh, you'll see parent portal sign up and there's a Google form. You could just fill out the Google form and uh, someone will get back to you with a pin and password. Um, oh, am I missing anything? I wanna make sure I don't skip anything. Ale, what do you think? I think it's good. Uh, I think we're good. Go to the next one. To, thank you, Ms. Valdez. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, Gracie Gutierrez, who is going to enlighten us about Parent Portal. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, if that's okay with you, so I can go to Parent Portal sure. and make you a little more familiar with this. So give me just a second to okay. take over. Mr. Pinnell, can you help out with this? It's great out for me right now. Absolutely. Let me pass the presenter role to you. Give me just a second. Thank you. Okay, you should be getting now, Gracie. Oh, no. Yes, you should be good. I should, yes, I have it. Thank you. So is everybody seeing our district website? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so this is a district website. This is the easiest place to launch a parent portal. So if you're not familiar with that to get in, you just have to type in www.chjusd.net and it takes you directly to here. And this is where Melanie just reviewed everything for you. And she was referring to the icons on the right hand side. It's all of these here. And to get to the portal, you click on the queue and it takes you to both the student portal and the parent portal. So I am just gonna switch over to this. Once you click on that, it's this is what it looks like. You should have your parent ID. If not, I will go over where that link is that Melanie just reviewed with you and I'll show you exactly where to click on. So she just had a screenshot and I'm live on here, that might help you. Everyone should have a parent ID. If you do not know what it is, you need to um, contact your school or fill out this form. We've also sent out emails. So if you do have an email on file with us, go ahead and uh, look for an email from the district and it'll give you your parent ID and a temporary password for you to launch onto the parent portal. So I'm gonna log into this training. It's not live information. It's not a real student. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get in here. This is what the parent portal looks like. Okay. If you have more than one student, you're going to see all the students' names listed on the top side of uh, the screen. 
and you'll have a plus sign next to each name. So it depends on what student you want to look at as to what you're going to click the plus sign next to. So this one only has one student, so I'm just going to go ahead and click the plus sign and it shows me it's a Christian Garcia. On the left hand side, we have different applications of what you could view on here. You have the minus sign and a plus sign. When it has a minus sign, it's already open. And it'll show you what everything is. And it's also a quick rep, a quick way to get to that portion of the parent portal. So like right now I clicked on assignments, it took me to this, this area. If this was live and teachers, you know, already had assignments, you would see all the assignments that teachers have assigned to the students. And you would see if they're missing any or if they've turned them in and what kind of grade they've gotten on them. We also have attendance available. I'm clicking on the attendance, it's like taking me to that area. And right now, once again, I said this is not good, but it's good to see what it looks like. So right now, if you were to log in and see all these unverified, and you know your student has been attending class, you could call the site and say, why is my student marked absent? I know he's been attending classes. So this is just a double a way to double check everything. The next one is the behavior icon. If there is anything, it's just a brief, it doesn't give you the detailed information about behavior incidents. It just gives you a, just like a summary because we don't want everybody to be looking. If you have any questions on it, that's when you contact the school. If you haven't been notified, but you should have been notified if anything's listed. This area here gives you any enrollment history with the district. And scrolling down, if your student is in secondary, middle school or high school, we have all the different GPAs in the system. If they're in high school is what we call the grad requirements. This is a good place for you to look and see if your son or daughter is on track to graduate from high school. So if you look at the first portion here, it's telling you all the requirements that they have to um, take in order to graduate. It's saying this is required, so 40 of English, 10 of foreign language, and so on. This is how many uh, credits they've taken so far to date, and this is what, what they're short. So for example, this is a senior, so you're seeing he's short 10 English credits, 10 history, so they're still okay because they have enough time to, grad to take these classes and graduate on time. If you're seeing they're short 100 credits and you only take you know 30 per semester, you know they're in trouble. So that's when you want to talk to the counselor and see what's happening and what they can do to get them graduate. And it just goes on down the different types of requirements. Further down is a transcript. These are all the classes I've taken while they've been in high school. And there's also schedules if you want to stop that transcript. I'm going to go to marks. Once we have report cards on file once for first quarter or semester or progress, everything will be available to you in this area. So if your student goes and grabs it from the mail, you think you're not gonna see it, you can go in here, click on the link and you can see the same report card that we mailed home to you. It'll be under student marks. There's schedules listed under schedule. So everything is everything on here and you can just click and you can see all that information. Is there any did I pretty much cover everything? You guys think I go over anything else on this? So this is the parent portal, and a lot of it is the same as what your child can see in their student portal, but you have a little more access to different things. If you need to change anything, you can call the school. You have quick links to the teachers. If you want to email the teachers, here under attendance summary, wherever you see an underline, you can click on that and get direct access to email the teachers. And so that is pretty much covers the parent portal portion of it. What I did want to show you is where the link is that Melanie talked about under our district website. Get there. So if you're not set up at this time, don't forget to go into the uh, district website, scroll to the bottom on the right hand side is here. You click on the where it says parent portal form, it's underlined. Once you hover over it, it underlines it, you can click on it and you complete that, the form. This will give you access to get your information to get a login. You only have to do the submit this form for one student. We should have all your students synced together. So as long as you do all your children, 
as long as you do one form, we can get you your ID and password. Okay. Now, from here, I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pass it back to Alejandra. Mrs. De La Torre. Thank you, Ms. Grigsby. Okay, so we go back. Oh. <clears throat> I know that I can, okay, I can share again. Okay, thank you. So once that you know uh, that you can access the friend portal online, you download the application, right, Ms. Gracie? And and Perfect. it looks Sorry, like this. Yes. Yes, this is oh, what it looks okay. like. You, look all, yes. you, you, you just go to your app store and look for CJUSD and that's what it will look like. It's gonna say Equitas. Q parent connection and you can download it. You can act also access this through your phone. Right. I know many parents want to have that information at their fingertip. Uh, fingertips without having to log on to a computer. Correct. Okay. Well, thank you. Ms. Gutierrez and we take you with Ms. Carmen Fernandez. She's uh, here with us tonight to present Q communications uh, as you know. During this distance learning period, it is of most importance that we maintain an open and continuous line of communication. Your role as a parent is uh, enhanced when it comes to the learning aspect um, because teachers are physically distant from your child, but you are the one at home and uh, you are the one person we can rely on to make sure that the student is supported to have those valuable interactions uh, that that are called for when we are on, on distance learning mode. So Ms. Carmen, thank you for being with us and the mic is yours. Hi, good evening everyone. So I'm gonna go over Q communications with everyone here. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and take over and just um, control the slideshow for my end if that's okay. Sure. I stopped sharing. Thank you. It's all yours. Thank you. All right, let me make sure I'm on the right one. Okay, can you see my screen? There we go. Okay, so Q communications. So Q communications is a our new communication platform. Um, that we recently moved over as a district. We moved over because this is also much easier to um, manage, uh, and also it includes communication for the for the teacher to the parent and also the student. So now students and uh, are included in this communication platform, and I will explain to you how to access Q communication. You access this application through the parent portal. When you're logged into your parent portal account, you will see a section titled school links. Under school links, you'll see a uh, link that says Q communication. You'll click on that link. When you click on that link, it will land you on what we call the announcement feed within your Q communication account. Your announcement feed here is going to always display for you a chronological feed of all of the announcements that you are receiving from the district, from the schools that your children attend, from classes, uh, from your students, um, teachers, and groups that you follow or that your child follows. Now, down over to the left-hand side, you will see here school sites. So any school sites that your children are attending or enrolled at will display here under school. Moving down, you'll see my students. And when you see my students, it'll show a list of your students that are enrolled at CJUSD. This little arrow right here, I, I'm sorry, I know it's a little difficult to see, but when you click on that arrow, it will display the classes that your child is scheduled to. So if you have a student that is at the middle school or the high school, when you just when you click on that drop down, it's going to display all, all of their periods, all of their classrooms and You'll be able to select a classroom and if the teacher's posting announcements to their announcement uh, classroom feed, you'll be able to view what the teacher posts for the students. Moving on, we have uh, the option to follow groups. So any groups that are made public, you can just click on this little blue um, circle that has a white plus sign in the middle 
and you'll see a display of groups um, that are public and for you to um, to start following. If there are groups that are labeled as private, you must be invited to that group before you can follow that group. Over here, we have this icon that is uh, looks like a little conversation bubble. That is our direct messages, and we you can use those for one on one conversations with the teacher or teachers. And then up here, we have our um, icon for your profile settings. I will get into that a little bit more um, in the next few slides uh, that you can customize some information uh, as far as your prof profile is concerned. So here we have direct messages. As I said, this is a conversation that you can have just like texting between yourself and your students, teacher or teachers. So when you come to direct messages and you click on that icon, the little conversation bubble, you're going to see that you can cl uh, click here to create a new message. Once you click create a new message, you can start typing, uh, although you can't see it up here, but you can start typing to who you're going to send the message to. This is where you would start typing the name of your student's teacher or teachers, and then you can send them a message. As you can see here, I we put in a sample of hello, Mr. Apple. See, this is a message from the counselor to the parent. And just so you, for the purpose of this demonstration, the counselor wrote the message to the parent in English. But the parent is set up to receive their notifications and their messages in Spanish. So what this little, these little two conversation bubbles tell me here is that there's a translation mode between the two. So it's auto translation translating. So whatever language you are set up to in this application are, is the language that you'll receive your notifications and your announcements. So even though the counselor typed it in English, this parent is set up in Spanish in the application, they're going to receive their messages in Spanish. Now, let's say that you, that you, it doesn't quite make sense and that's okay. Sometimes it's easier to try to translate it on your own or see it in the original language that it was sent. You could click on this little, these two um, conversation bubbles and it will display for you the original uh, message that it was sent in. So same for the counselor. If you are set up to only type in Spanish or any other language, the language will the I'm sorry, the language will be translated into English for the counselor. So it's a really nice feature with this application because we don't for our parents that are non English speaking, they're able to type the message in their native language and the recipient will receive that message in their language that they have set up for in communication. And then here on the left hand side, moving on, we have the what we call the archive messages. So any messages that you have um, going on with the teachers, counselors or whatnot, it'll archive itself there. It'll just stay there. It, it doesn't go away and you can always come back and click on it and continue with the conversation or move forward. I'm sorry, or starting you one. Um, down here is just a sample that as you start typing your message at the bottom, you will automatically uh, get this little arrow with uh, in a, within a blue circle, and that's just so you can send your message. If you want to add an attachment, you also have that option. You'll have a little paper clip icon, and if you can upload to add an attachment or um, or a photo. Uh, also, an important note here is direct messages are instantly delivered within the app. So if you sent one to the teacher or the counselor, you, that person, that staff member will immediately receive it within the app and staff will also receive it by email. Not all of our staff members are set up to receive it by text message. So that's important to know. And vice versa to you parents. If we have your email address on file, that's fantastic. You'll also receive the direct message, not only within the app, but by email. And if we have your phone number on file tagged as a, as a cellular phone and okay to receive text messages, you'll also receive that message as a text message on your phone. Let's move on. So here we are uh, looking at profile settings and these profile settings, there's three um, categories that fall within your profile. So the first that we see here is the personal information. And this is very important uh, because this is what we're gonna cover preferred language. 
So first off, in this bubble here, you're always going to see your initials, your first name, last name, initials. You can change that. Um, you can change that. Not you can't change the initials, but you can change the the photo. So if you want to upload a personal photo or a bitmoji, you can. You have that ability. We also have the option of changing display name. So here we have uh, John Appleseed Parent. If Mr. Appleseed wanted to be displayed as Mr. Appleseed, Johnny's dad, he certainly can type over that. And um, I believe the character limit is 30. I could be wrong, but he could add that John Appleseed dash Johnny's dad. And whenever he messages the teachers or messages um, through this application, it'll always display John Appleseed, Johnny's dad, if that's what you'd like the display name to be. If we have an email on file for you, it will display here in the QC application. If we do not, then we, it will not display. Again, if we have a cellular number for you on file that is tagged as text past cellular and text message OK, we will upload it as a mobile phone. You do see at work phone um, here. That is not something that we upload. We will not make any um, automated calls to your uh, to your work uh, place of business. Uh, only personal or or human calls, if needed, will will call you at work. And then, if there's a residence number on file, we will call you um, at your uh, home phone number. Here, you'll see that uh, we have schools displayed, and these are school sites that you're associated to based on your children's enrollment. And then coming down here to prefer language, again, this is very important. So by default, whatever the home language is set up for your student in their in their student account is what we default the parent and the student in Q communications. Now, parents, you and your student have the ability to come into this application and change that preferred language. Please keep in mind that if you make that change in this application, we have no control to change it in the application for you. So it doesn't matter if we have, if we're uploading data that says that you are set to a home language of English, if by mistake you come in here and you change it to, let's just say Vietnamese or Arabic, that was an experience with the parent a couple of weeks ago. They honestly, by mistake, they were setting up their profile settings and they just happened to click on preferred language and chose Arabic. And I, it was very hard to try to figure out, okay, where did this happen? And this is where it happened. Um, so please be very careful because you can change it. And even though it doesn't ask you to save or submit, as soon as you click on a different language, it's going to immediately update your settings to that language setting. So please make sure that you have it set to your preferred language. So any notifications that you receive on the announcement feed, any phone calls, any mess, text messages, emails will come to you in that preferred language setting. We're going to move on to our feed manager. So still we're looking at your profile settings and under feed manager, we'll Again, you'll see here the schools that you're associated to based on your students' enrollments, and then the groups that you are following. Here you can manage the groups. If you no longer want to uh, follow a group, you can come here and just simply click on follow. Classes, now classes are based on the classes that, um, that your students are enrolled in or um, are scheduled to. So if you have teachers that are pretty active in QC, that's awesome. You can see uh, what the feeds or the announcements that they include you in here under classes. And then here we have our notification settings. So this is a very delicate area. So this is how you can decide how you wanna be notified with our announcements. As you can see here, the first option is we have direct messages. You, direct messages are not, are not delivered by phone call, but yet they are delivered by text or email. If you deselect any of those options where it is checked, just please remember again, just like preferred language, we cannot come in here and update those settings for you. So while we understand that you may not always want to call or you prefer a text or you prefer the email, we completely respect that, but we also cannot change that back for you. So any settings that you change for yourself here are settings that you will have to come back and update yourself. And moving on to activity here in the announcement feed, you see on the top right hand corner, this little bell in blue. When you click on that little bell in blue, it opens up all of the activity that you've been included in uh, Q communication. 
So these little icons on the left of the initials will tell you if it's an announcement or a direct message. Um, it's also a really neat shortcut to get to that announcement um, or that particular message uh, right away. So it, that's a really neat feature. Um, also, parents, just so you know that we also have a feature on our end to see who has viewed a message. So if a message was delivered to you via the, within the app, which everyone does get messages delivered to them via the app by default, but if you also, if you log in and you click and you view the, the, um, the announcement, we're going to see on our end that you did click and view that announcement. Same if you open the email that you sent, or if you received the phone call and you answered the call, we do receive that information that it was delivered successfully and or that you read the message or the email. And that's all I have for everyone uh, tonight. I hope I am. I hope I explain this. Um, if not, please let me know if you have any questions. We are more than uh, available to help everyone out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. And then we welcome again uh, Ms. Melanie Valdez. She's going to talk to uh, us about ClassLink, which is something that I uh, that I explained to many parents via email. Uh, many of you didn't know how to get to ClassLink. Many more may still need to uh, learn that path. So uh, welcome, Ms. Melanie Valdez, again. Thank you, Ale. Okay, so ClassLink. ClassLink is a site where parent, where students can go and access all of their applications that um, a teacher or the district or an administrator wants to share with them. And applications could be um, like literally applications on a phone, like apps or websites. It could be um, their curriculum. It could be a lot of different things. Um, before we go into uh, showing you what it looks like, I just want to say that um, our district does a really good job of going through apps and vetting them to make sure that they are safe for students to use. So all of the apps that students have access to in ClassLink are um, vetted to make sure that we do not share student information with app companies that um, won't protect our students. So I just want to give you that peace of mind before I show you what it looks like. Um, Ale, can we bring back up the um, the slides? Give me just a second, Ali. Oh, sorry. Well, so while they're working on that, students um, who use a Chromebook, it's their homepage. So any student who's using a, a district Chromebook shouldn't have to navigate to any site. It's going to be the first page that they see when they first open their Chromebook. Uh, for students who are not using a school district um, device, they can get to ClassLink from any uh, computer or phone. Uh, all you really have to do, if you're on a computer, you can go to the district website. Again, click on Let's Go at the top right-hand side, and you'll see it's like the third option down. Um, clicking on that will ask you to sign in. Well, it'll ask your student to sign in with their Google credentials. It'll be their Colton Joint Unified School District login. All of our students know what that is. It's their email address and their district password. Um, if you're on a phone, you can download a ClassLink app on your phone. I actually did it myself. Um, and they can access all of their school um, applications on a phone as well. Okay. So this is what it looks like when they first log into their launch pad. The launch pad is sort of um, a very basic, how do I say this? It's one place to see all of the, what the district feels is um, essential for a student across the board. So all of our students have um, Gmail, all of our students have um, Google Classroom access, they have all of um, their Google Drive. That red folder that Ale is circling, <laughs> bring it to your attention, um, is the folder that uh, that they can go to to access their um, Google Classrooms. I know that's really important to our teachers. A good majority of our teachers use Google Classroom, um, but also that's how they can access their their Gmail and their um, anything Google related. There are a lot of different apps in there. 
Uh, they're shared based on um, the school site and what the school wants them to use at, at, a, at a pinch um, or what the district wants to promote. But there's also a way for teachers to share apps with just their class. And the way that they do that is they click on that little backpack at the very bottom of the screen. That little backpack will actually take you to a list of classes that the student is scheduled into. So if we click, thank you, Ale. The next thing that they see is the classes that they're scheduled into. So this is an elementary student. That's why you only see one course. If we were in a secondary, we would see somewhere between six and seven classes, like boxes for each class. Um, if you're looking for, let's say you're a secondary student, you want your history applications for, that are shared to you by your history teacher, you would just click on your history teachers set of that course. But because we're at an elementary site, we're just gonna click on the one course that's available right there and see what a student sees once they select a class. Perfect. So the first thing they would see is announcements from the class. Uh, to be fair, this is rarely used because teachers will more often use their Google Classroom to share information um, or, or Seesaw if, if you're um, one of our little ones. But this is one place where information could be shared by a teacher. Um, the students will most likely just need to click on the um, apps. On the left hand side, there's the word apps. If they click on that, they'll see all of the apps that the teacher has shared with their student. So again, the launch pad is just like district wide, the things that we all think that they need to use very quickly. The backpack in this area is specifically this teacher feels that they need these applications. Um, so that's how they can access them. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, we can't hear you, Ale. <laughs> I muted myself. <laughs> That can be a good thing. <laughs> okay, with that, I uh, we understand that there still may be uh, more questions that you have. Uh, please make sure that you reach out to your teacher. Your teacher should be your first line of communication. For, uh, for problem solving, if you're having difficulty with the Chromebook, if you uh, need a reminder about something that they explained, perhaps uh, uh, at the back to school night, whatever they called it these days, you had uh, webinars or or uh, town halls, virtual town halls with your uh, school sites. Uh, so please, uh, please don't be shy. I guess that's what we're trying to say. Don't be shy. It is, is especially important these days that that you don't wait, that you don't wait to reach out for help because your ability to support your student is even more important these days. We want to be sure that your child is. Uh, experiencing those uh, opportunities to learn and to maintain their curiosity and be avid for learning. So uh, with that, we want to also uh, make sure that you're aware we have a different parent committees at district level. We have our African American, American Parent Advisory Committee. The dates are on the screen. Uh, we will be announcing those meetings as they approach. We also have our district English learner advisory committee. The meetings are also on the screen. Those take place in the morning. We have uh, our most diverse uh, parent committee at district level is DEPA. Uh, and we have for these dates, we have morning meetings in Spanish and evening meetings in English. Um, but just as you know, we are recording this meeting. We will be recording every single meeting that we have. Uh, because parents like to go back and reference, or they want to tell other parents and, and point them in the direction of uh, staying in the loop and being informed by uh, maybe watching our recordings. We also have a very unique group uh, with very special needs, and this is uh, parents of students in our dual immersion program. Our dual immersion program uh, is, is unique in that instruction is delivered initially uh, 
90% in Spanish, 10% English in kinder, and 80% Spanish, 20% English in first grade, and so on. And so these parents face different needs and different challenges. And for that reason, we want to make sure that we dedicate a special time for them and that they have a platform to interact with us uh, with the intention to serve every parent and, and meet your needs. On the screen, you see my email address and you also see my phone number. That's my office number, but we now have the ability to receive uh, phone calls that are uh, dialed in for the office at home. And so we are a phone call away or an email away. I would warn you that I, I miss many phone calls because I'm at meetings and, or on another call. And so email tends to be a good a way of communicating with me. And if I believe or if I feel that there's additional conversation or more clarification that needs to happen for me to support you, then I, I will ask you to please uh, connect with me via phone. Uh, also, Ms. Valdez, uh, or Mr. Benel, would you like to do the honors? Because it's in English. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry, I was busy answering questions. You caught me off guard. Um, I'm, sorry, yes, I'm, if, if... I'm very good at that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Sorry. No problem. Um, so, if you are having any any issues with uh, the technology that, that your students are using, please reach out to your teachers. Um, they are kind of the first line of support for any any sort of technical issues, and most things can be resolved fairly quickly. Um, kind of the the easiest thing that you can do to to help solve things yourself is just restart the restart the Chromebook, turn it off, and turn it back on. That fixes most problems. Um, if you do need additional support, like I said, please reach out to your teacher. They they're kind of that first line of support. Um, and if they're unable to assist you, then uh, we, we do have support resources available at the district level. Uh, you can go to the URL that's um, that's shown up above. I believe that that is the correct one. Um, and your, your teacher can also point you in the correct direction um, on where you can get additional help from us. Thank you, Mr. Pinnell. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Thank you. Oh, to, in just to summarize, uh, we want to be sure that you are familiar and comfortable with the tools and, and, the, and the applications that can make that interaction and that collaboration take place between us educators and the permanent and, um, and most important educators in the lives of our students. We want to be sure that we are continuously in communication that we know if there's any adjustment necessary for your child that we are aware so we can take care of it and we want to rely on one another to make sure that after this uh, very unique period of time that we uh, that we can look back and and know that we succeeded because we worked together our students uh, continue to have a future uh, it, it is it is a, a mix of, of responses to the having to stay at home. Some children love it. Some other students are missing their peers and they want that social uh, interaction in person. But this is the moment when we can be creative and flexible and, and make sure that they, that they stay well, stay safe, and that they continue to be curious because curiosity is uh, essential for learning. Uh, please be sure to reach out. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Diaz, Ms. Valdez, uh, Carmen Gracie, if you would like to add anything. But with that, we want to reassure you that we're here for you, that we are a team that we're working hard to address the needs of your students. And uh, this meeting will be posted. And the questions that we couldn't um, answer uh, during the meeting, uh, we will capture and then post along with their answers uh, for you and for other parents to see. Mr. Diaz, anything to add? Uh, actually, Alvin, can I, can I add to that? Um, I just, just want to let everybody know that there's, there's a few questions in here that are not, uh, not necessarily relevant to the uh, information technology department. Uh, okay. But please, but we, I'm, I'm responding to them with my email address. So please uh, feel free to email, to email me and I will try to get you in touch with the correct party uh, to get those questions answered. Cause we, uh, in IT, we don't have all the answers. So we'll, we'll get, we'll get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you. Mr. Diaz. 
Hello, I just wanted to uh, reiterate again, uh, thank you for being here, Ale, thank you for doing such a great job with this. Um, the uh, recording of this particular um, meeting today will be posted on our website. We hope to have it up um, by within 24 to 48 hours at the latest, um, as soon as we get it populated in the back end, but we will be posting it again on our website within 24 to 48 hours. Then a, a couple of people had questions on the chat. Other than that, Ali, I think we're good. Um, again, thank you, everyone. I hope you are uh, ready to start off another interesting <laughs> new year. And uh, we're here to help. So anything that we can do, as Mr. Pinnell stated, please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, Ali, if you could keep the, the Q&A open for a little while, I'd like to go through these and answer as many as we can. Um, so just of course. feel free to leave the meeting meeting running and we can just turn all the cameras and stuff off and okay. I'll try to cr crank through as many okay. of these as possible. With that, uh we bid you a farewell and and we hope you stay safe uh you and your children and uh let's let's stay in touch thank you very much i will stop uh, the recording gracie and carmen thank you so much for for uh, presenting yes Great. thank you gracie, yes thank you all carmen. yes thank you neve for answering questions mr Pinnell. The option to stop recording is not active for me. Oh, uh, yeah, I stole the uh, the host you role. Stole. I will, I will <laughs> stop recording now. <laughs>